Today we're gonna to talk about how to find success for you and your robotics team in First Lego League. Just like any other robotics competition, FLL has many tips and tricks that may not be fully obvious at first glance. So if this is your first FLL season or you're an existing team trying to get a little bit further ahead, then this is the video for you. G'day, I'm Mr. Code. Now, I have been coaching FLL teams since 2018. First LEGO League is a fantastic competition that gives your team a focal point to put all of that classroom theory into practice. I'm going to talk about my experience in my home country, Australia. So there might be some areas that are different in your country. Make sure that if you have any questions, you check with your local first representative. Now I spent a lot of time making robotics content videos just like these, so if you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. From the outset, an FLL tournament has two major components. These are the robot game and the innovation project. The robot game challenges your students to design a robot that autonomously solves problems on a gaming field that changes every season. This means that you can't use the same robot year after year. Part of the robot game is your robot presentation, which is a five minute talk to describe how your robot was designed, built and programmed. The innovation project is a science presentation completely separate from your robot game. Students have to use the season's theme as an inspiration to solve a real world problem. This project can be as simple as making a PowerPoint presentation on a theoretical solution, or as complex as an actual real-world invention that gets manufactured, marketed, and sold to make someone's life better. There are multiple awards and trophies that you can win in an FLL tournament. So to define success for your team, you might want to consider focusing on something that is like winning the Robot Performance Award, which is having the highest scoring robot in the tournament. The Innovation Award is for the best innovation project, or maybe other judged awards like Breakthrough or Core Value Awards for all these other outstanding achievements. However, if you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in the most prestigious award of all, the Champions Award. The Champions Award is given to the best all-round team in a tournament, and most crucially, the teams that progress to the next stage of the tournament, like state, national, or international events, are determined by the Champions Award criteria. So how does a team win a Champions Award, and how do they progress? What I've found in all my years of coaching FLL teams is this. The harder you try to win the Champions Award, the less likely it is for you to actually win. And that is because of the unique way First Lego League calculates the score for your Champions Award criteria. Your score is split into four parts. Your robot game, robot design, innovation project, and finally, your core values. Your robot game is straightforward. It is the highest score you receive in three rounds of the robot game, but it only counts for a quarter of your overall score. The robot design score is basically how effective your robot presentation is in explaining your robot's development, build quality, and code approach. That also counts for 25%. The innovation project is the quality and impact of your science solution. Purely theoretical ideas will generally not score as well as a fully realized solution and prototype, and this is another 25%. Finally, we have the first core values. The core values are discovery, innovation, impact, inclusion, teamwork, and fun. 
While all the other components can be more or less measured, the core values of your team are observed throughout the tournament. Is your team friendly and respectful with a diverse range of personalities? Are they eager and willing to help others? Are they enjoying themselves and showing sportsmanship? That is the final 25%. During a tournament, after all of the robot games and presentations, judges will deliberate on the teams using the Champions Award criteria and determine who is progressing to the next stage of the tournament. Progression to the next tournament is considered an award in itself. After that, they will determine how the remaining awards are allocated. Teams cannot receive more than one award with the exception of the Robot Performance Award. That is, the team that scores the highest in the robot game. Because of this method of calculating, teams can receive the Robot Performance Award, but not be invited to progress to the next tournament. And some teams can receive no award at all, but still progress to the next tournament. Knowing all of this, there are a few ways that your team can improve your Champions Award score. Firstly, ensure every team member understands how the robot is built. Include everyone in the design, building and coding process so that the students all know how the robot works. This improves their robot presentation, especially when judges ask follow-up questions. Number two, make sure team technicians practice playing the robot game a lot, more than what you would expect to be enough practice. Your team will only have three attempts at the robot game, so make sure that they all count. There are going to be slight differences between tables and lighting conditions as well, so make sure that your robot is tested on as many different tables as possible. Three, have students dedicated to working on the innovation project. The project is just as important as the robot game, so make sure that your team is working on something that they are passionate about. Make it a learning experience so that the students work on a diverse range of skills and technologies. We like to take our students on excursions every season to see how technology is applied in the real world. Finally, prioritize teaching the first core values. All those other technical skills are what the students do, but the core values determine how they do what they do. Include team building activities in your season. Encourage the students to volunteer and raise money for their projects. Talk about teamwork, respect, and sportsmanship. Make sure that the team understands that winning is not as important as learning. That way, if they don't win anything, it's no big deal. And if they do win something, they'll be graciously professional about it. My Robotics Center Creator Academy is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. If your team is looking for coaching advice, we provide remote coaching, building and coding assistance to teams all around the world. Visit www.creatoracademy.au or drop me a message to find out more. Thanks so much for watching. I hope I have helped your team in understanding the FLL competition process a little bit more. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you write it down in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.